Hello and welcome to the Pixel Ventura workout where I color what you color and today we're gonna be coloring something from Miss Sheena Francisco. And I think it's her in a hoodie. It's a vector illustration of her in a hoodie. And it has actually two of them. There's one outside and one inside. So what I'm gonna do first is make a border so uh, let's see the, 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 the stuff outside. I'm going to make it as though it looks like a, a photo. No, not, not exactly a photo. A photo, photo. What I mean is we're going to make it look like it's a photo. It's an image within a frame in a room. A very moody evening scene. Yeah, something like that. So let's, you know, start off by trying out Hue and saturation, you know, some people like this. I usually use it for these quick things. I prefer to use a layer and just uh, set it to one other blending mode. This one looks good. Color, the color blending mode. So I have a layer with a color blending mode on top to set the, set the colors a little closer to each other. And now I've added a multiply layer. I don't know, it makes it a little too dark, so I'm lowering the opacity for that layer. I've also added a layer mask just in case I need to bring the light back to cut certain color. So now this eye is kind of odd. It's got light on top. It's as though she has some special powers really, um, coming out from her eye. But instead of that, having the light on the bottom might be much better. After all, the flash of the camera that was used to take this shot appears to have flashed more on the bottom of her face. See the shadows are going up from the bottom of her nose up, so the light is obviously coming from below. So that's why I put the eye light down there. In the meantime, uh, I'm just trying to see if I can add a bit more uh, depth to the shadows. The basic form of the person. It's a very graphic piece because of the shirt. I mean, sorry, the hoodie. The hoodie has a lot of design line in the stretch. So you've got a very graphic element. You've also got a real life person. How they uh, a vector illustration. It's still a person in the shot. So what I'm going to try to do now, after putting those lights and shadows, blend them all together with an adjustment layer to see how I can bring out and import more important people. Okay, I don't want to call it chance. This time I'm gonna think about the, the shine on the photo. Put that under the border. The shine on the photo frame. So I'm gonna put some blog. Very simple. But you know, you can always spend more time on it to make it look absolutely realistic. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm just going to do enough to make it appear so it was a photo frame within an environment. Dark and snowy, I guess. Snowy environment. So I put some shadow and some light onto that photo. Make it blend in one. Just to see what's next. Uh, let's try putting in some of that snow. Make a new layer, put some black in it, add some noise to it, put some black and white, add some noise, give yourself a blur, after setting it to screen, Gaussian blur, maybe around something close to 8, uh, within that range, then levels it to bring out the snow, bring the two little triangles, the black one and the white one together, to add snow. I'm going to try to move it out of her face, so I transformed it, and now I'm going to try to move uh, some of these uh, snow bits away from her face. Snowflakes. Snow bits. Snow bits or snowflakes. Yeah. Okay, so that's some snow. I can add a bit more. Add a bit more by duplicating the layer, making it bigger. 
the appearance that we have snow coming very close to the camera. And we're going to squeeze it in, give it the appearance of, you know, uh, that the snow is actually moving faster than the shutter speed. So a bit of a motion blur for that. Okay. Here's how it started. Here's how it goes so far. Okay. Well, I forgot to put the eyes. What I'm doing now here is I'm trying to make the photograph appear glowing. In some places, it has this sort of a glow because light is catching on to all that snowy, foggy stuff. It has to glow. Uh, first of all, I have to bring the shadow away from the cheek. Bother. Next, I'm going to uh, bring them all together once I've uh, smudged it a bit more. I can't find it the way it is. But, you know, part of me just wants to put some like shadow blending. Flat. Anyway, it's not a significant change. Let's bring back See how it looks. Okay, okay. We're actually playing this in real time. It's not sped up in any way. Alright, so now I've got a copy of all that and I'll duplicate it, blur it. See, it gives a ghostly impression. I said it's soon. So it sort of glows now. I don't want to glow it on her face, it kind of blurs it out, so I can see that it's a layer and straight black. Bring back some more details on her face. You can still appreciate the design on her hoodie. Let's add some uh, uh, light from the bottom onto her nose, onto her lips, maybe onto her cheeks and chin as well. Uh, we can use an overlay brush. And set it to white, and uh, that would pretty much let Photoshop decide what brighter color to give whatever you're spraying. Rather than you know setting it to normal, which will give you white, setting it to overlay will uh, let Photoshop decide for you what the color would be. Now, if you use a screen brush. I'll be using one a bit later. That gives you a colder, brighter color. The overlay tends to give you a warmer, brighter color. Anyway, so I've got that on a screen layer, as you can see. I'll merge that down. So I do an overlay layer first, or overlay sprays first, before I put a screen layer on, or screen spray. Overlay first. Alright, so let's put it into the environment. So the shadow. So I'll match that shadow back. I'll just keep that design that she put on the hoodie. Next, uh, no. let's put some maybe light on the entire place. Yeah, the whole place needs some light. Right now it's just going to so Let's put it in place. Give the impression that. There's some other light source out there, and perhaps there's also some snow out there. There's a snow. There's a snow. There's snow in the photo, and there's snow in the environment where the photo frame is. So, snow within snow. Whatever. Size that up. Transform that. Weird. I'll invert it to allow more light. So that you can see the snowflake. You have to change the uh, orientation and also warp it. A short for warping. But now it looks a little more like leopard skin, which doesn't look pretty. I'm going to try to make it look like a bit of snow. To bring up the snow out, that's a word. It's kind of far away from being cast onto the photo frame. I don't want it too sharp, or else it'll look like it's really nearby. Something like that should be fine. Uh, actually, it looks like tree shadow, but in any case, it's not that distracting. It gets the job done. 
Put on the screen layer. Put some reflection on the bottom. Some light, perhaps on the table. I could simply just select color and tap it in. You tap in different colors inside that space. One should be fine. So I think I should have had it. Right, so basically that's how it looks like. Now if you've got the artwork you want to see me color, go ahead and post it on our Facebook. The pixel things are a Facebook page. Here it is. If you'd like to take a workshop, a Pixel Pintura workshop, go ahead and take a look at www.pixelpintura.com for our workshop.